Howdy folks, we're here today to talk about our GWizard Calculator's Cut Optimizer function. I'm going to show you a demonstration of that function and this is all part of our GWizard University teaching you how to use the different features of GWizard in short videos. Okay, so the Cut Optimizer is all about answering the question of how to choose your cut depth and your cut width. Uh, a lot of folks want to know about this. They get in and, yeah, sure, they can calculate their feeds and speeds very easily with GWizard, but how the heck do I decide what to type in here for the cut depth and the cut width? Uh, likewise, if you're programming with your CAM package, it's going to want to know you know, your cut depth and cut width. You know, sometimes we call the uh, cut width the step over or the radial engagement, and the cut depth is also known as the axial engagement. Uh, but these are numbers that people have to put forward and uh, most of the time this is done with either you know <laughs> sort of guesswork or rule of thumb experience this is what I've always used and it's worked for me so let's keep going uh, but the objective here is to give you some tools to actually optimize uh, your choice of cut depth and cut width. Uh, GWizard Calculator includes two tools for doing that uh, we're going to be talking today about the cut optimizer which is triggered by these two uh, sort of speedometers that sit next to the cut depth and the cut width. The other tool that will do this and we'll have another video for you in the GWizard University is called the CAD CAM Wizards but we're not going to talk about those on this video. Okay so let's go ahead and try it out. Uh, it's very important when you're using the cut optimizer to get your stick out set correctly uh, for your tool uh, and if I if I just hold my mouse cursor over the tool it tells me the definition of stick out. Uh, stick out is the distance from your tool holder to the tip of the tool. Um, it's that part of the tool that's exposed and subject to flex or what we call tool deflection if you push on the tool hard enough with the forces of cutting. Now for micro mills it's defined a little bit differently. A micro mill is you know, some, something relatively tiny, smaller than an eighth of an inch. They typically have an eighth inch or metric equivalent uh, shank that goes in the collet and then they'll have a uh, taper down to the actual flutes which are smaller diameter. Uh, for those tools we define the, the uh, tool stick out as being the length of the smallest diameter. Uh, the part that has the flutes on it. Okay, so that's your stick out. Make sure you have your correct stick out entered, otherwise the results from Cut Optimizer will just be uh, uh, incorrect. What Cut Optimizer is going to do is find for you the longest cut depth or the widest cut width that falls within the constraint of tool deflection. Okay, so let's just try that out. Got the st so some stick out entered. It's a half inch end mill, four flutes. Uh, we're going to be cutting some low carbon steel with a titanium aluminum nitride coated carbide end mill. So, pretty standard scenario here. Um, <coughs> uh, we have to choose which variable to optimize, either the cut depth or the cut width. Uh, and then the way it works is you click the speedometer next to the variable you're optimizing uh, and it'll optimize it. So, let's start with. Uh, an optimization of the uh, 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 cut depth. Let's say that we want to cut a one inch deep slot and we'd like to know how deeply we can go which will tell us how many passes are needed to cut this slot. Uh, since it's one inch I've got a, a little bit over an inch of stick out so there's some clearance and the tool holder isn't going to run into the workpiece. So uh, it is a slot, and so let's hit the slot button, which sets us to uh, uh, full width. And you can already see some deflection warning coming up here. Uh, so whatever the number is, it'll be less than uh, 0.4. Uh, let's just click our speedo though and find out. Okay, so up pops our uh, uh, cut optimizer, and uh, it's got some information here for us that it either brought over or tells us. So. We have the uh, 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 the stick out. Uh, we have a deflection allowance, and it in this case it assumes it's it's a roughing operation, uh, 
and it's going to allow us uh, uh, a thousandth of an inch maximum deflection. Uh, it's got three modes. It can optimize the width, the depth, or the feed rate. Uh, and we'll talk about these in a, in a second. But uh, for this case, we're optimizing the depth. So what we want to know is what is the maximum depth that we can go and still keep the half inch cut, cut width? And that answer is uh, 0.2703. So 270 thousandths of an inch deep is the most that we can go. And so let's save that. And you can see the different values are here, and 270 thousandths is plugged in for a, a full slot width. Uh, it's calculated the RPM and the feed rate, and our deflection is indeed within our limit of a thousandth of an inch. So in this case, to go a full inch, we're going to need about, uh, oh, let's see, we're going to need uh, four passes, three of them at 0.2703. And your cut depth, by the way, is just the part of the flute's engaging. So even if you're down in the bottom of the slot, uh, if you've already cut the material above that, uh, it's only the material you're actually cutting on this pass that is the cut depth. So we, we can cut up to 0 0.2703 inches of depth. Okay? How about optimizing our cut width? Um, here again, let's say uh, we're trying to say let's we're profiling the site of a part, and we need to go to a depth of a full inch, and we want to know what's the maximum width uh, that we can cut. It's you know it's clearly not a full slot. We've got a tremendous amount of deflection here. Uh, so same kind of thing. We've got our depth entered. We come over here and we click the speedo next to uh, cut width, and that'll optimize the width and uh, you see it changed up here to say optimizing the width and the maximum width we can cut in a full full one inch depth of cut is 0.2929 inches so we save that back and you can see that's the step over or the cut width that we can use for this particular operation uh, now you know why would you want to try to do it all in, in uh, uh, one pass well uh, it's 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 better for uh, tool life in many cases because you're spreading the wear over uh, the entire length of the flutes instead of just using the tip of the tool. Um, that gives more range for heat to also dissipate on the tool. And your wall finish is probably going to be prettier too because you've only got to make one pass. Uh, so that, that gives you some idea of why you might want to try to do that in one pass. And so now we've we've gone and calculated both both modes, cut depth and cut width. Uh, you saw there's also a mode to, to do a feed rate. If you insist on uh, locking down both the depth and the width, all it's got left to work with is is it can slow down the feed rate a certain amount and see if by doing that it'll get within your limit of your uh, deflection. That'd be a good one to try, for example, if you're getting really close but you can't quite get it all done in one pass, let's say. Uh, you know, maybe you you uh, try locking it down and, and let it back off the feed rate a little bit. Maybe that'll get it done in one pass and save you having to do more than one pass. Now let's just talk for a second about deflection limits. Uh, how do we know what the deflection limit ought to be? Uh, well, this is established by the tooling manufacturers and they have set recommendations that are based on preventing the onset of chatter. The more the tool deflects, think about that tool as if it was a little tuning fork or a little hammer uh, pounding on your workpiece. Uh, you know, the, the further you deflect the tuning fork, the more likely it is to vibrate and cause chatter. Chatter is a resonant phenomenon, and so they, they recommend keeping it to uh, less than that thousandth of an inch. And that is scaled uh, based on the size of your tool. Very small tools can't tolerate anything like a thousandth of an inch. Does that mean you never can go beyond uh, that much uh, deflection? No, that's just, you know, that's playing it safe, uh, trying to avoid the chatter. You could try up to about maybe twice that threshold, and if there's no chatter coming from the workpiece, you're good to go. You've got, a, you've got a lot more allowance for deflection. If you get much more than twice, though, you know, it's kind of like bending the paper clip too many times. That's just going to really increase the... Uh, uh, the pain to the tool and really shorten its tool life considerably. Uh, by the way, you have the ability to change this allowance. Uh, 
you can set it over here to a different percentage. I've got it at 100%, which means use the G-Wizard recommendations. If you wanted to go with that 2x, you could set it up to 200. Uh, again, I, I am not a not a big fan of uh, dealing with chatter, but if you're really trying to get through the work, it's worth it to, to go ahead and try it at a higher number and see if you get any chatter, and if you don't, you're good to go. So that is our cut optimizer, which helps you to get the optimal cut depth and cut width. Thanks very much.